Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 2 of Macro Analysis, Trundle in the Jungle. This is a D2 MMR game. So let's go right into the quick things. Let's look at Team Comp. We have a very late game Team Comp here with Vayne, Lulu, Bot, Swain in mid, Aatrox in the top, and me as Trundle. Uh, this Team Comp, even without looking at their Team Comp, our Team Comp obviously runs some risks. Uh, one, we're very late game heavy, which means that we have to play very careful in the early game. Uh, we have to, in, th in this meta, in this time period, uh, having a very late game heavy team comp is actually very risky. And, and oftentimes it does get punished. So we have to be very careful. Now, when we even look at their team comp here, they have a very strong early game. They have Graves, MF, Nami, Bot. Vagar is not the strongest, but like, you know, can be very useful and um, Garen in the top. So obviously their, late, uh, their early game we have to be very careful about. In addition, uh, even though we have a very strong late game and we should be able to roll them in the late game, they also have a late game policy through Vagar. And Vagar's stun, as you guys know, is a very ridiculous stun. His damage output late game can be extreme. And they still have a chance to win late game because they can get picks with Vagar E and, and kind of roll through our team. So we have to make sure that we have to mitigate any chances of snowballing on their side uh, while just being resourceful. And in this game, I know that we're, they're probably going to be able to get their early objectives. But uh, if we are able to hold on and not have too big of a de deficit, we should be able to win this game. Alright, so let's go right into it. Um, looking at their comp, I, they're not necessarily going to invade, but it's possible with Nami. Um, so therefore, what I wanted my laners to do was I wanted bot to kind of go here and here, right, to see if they're going to invade while I ward their topside bush and just back. So let's go right into it. Just speed up times four times. Uh, first thing we want to look at is right here. And this is really weird by the vein. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to, this is kind of trolled by me. I shouldn't even have been showing here. I should just stay right here. I just wanted to get a safe ward. Um, right here um, at around 45 seconds, something like that. This vein does what I tell her to. This Lulu does not because she was AFK in the first like 15 seconds. And the vein is staying here for a little bit, but she doesn't think that they're going to invade because they haven't came yet. So this is a nice stall by, 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 by the red team here. So she's going to go back, but for some reason this vein, and I would have pinged her away from it. I would have pinged her away from it. Oh, I do. I, I do kind of ping it. I, I ping this because they might be invading from here. So Vayne kind of goes back to this tri bush, which is incredible to me. Fortunately for us, this Nami just misses the Q entirely. I don't know why she would Q like that, but she misses it. So we're able to just get out of there. Well, the Vayne is able to just flash out, fortunately. I mean, if they burn three flashes for that, 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 that would have been kind of tragic for them. So they don't flash, but they automatically had a better. Uh, level one than us because they were able to burn our late game veins flash That's very bad for us. I wasn't even looking there uh, too much. I was more concerned about getting this ward off here. I See that the Garen's here What I should have done because the Garen was here and this is why I'm in d2 is that I should have placed a ward earlier Right. I was stalling for the ward for to see um, So that the ward can last for as long as possible but what I should have done when I saw Garen here was immediately place it so that when he comes to the bush, he wouldn't see the ward. But he unfortunately did see the ward and established that there is vision here. So mistakes are made in the level one by us, which is not good because we were supposed to play our level one very safe. Level one gets even worse over here. Uh, let's look at what happens in this next sequence. So we see that the Swain is actually trying to get a deep ward in the red bush in the red buff around at this time and the problem with this ward and i've seen this happen in a couple of my games is that it's very risky because especially if you don't have backup from the top lane in your jungle it's a very risky ward because you could get collapsed on and guess what that's exactly what happens to this swain this garen was waiting for it he gets collapsed on the swain while the mid lane is about to start the swain gets chased up all the way to the top fortunately for him there's backup from the atrox over here he has to keep walking and walking away from the lane while the Garen chases him. Um, and now he has to burn his TP so that he can grab the XP mid. 
now we have a TP disadvantage as well, um, which is a big thing for laning, right? And in addition to that, uh, we don't even know for sure if this guy is able to get the EXP here. Fortunately, his TP does come back in time, but uh, obviously we had a very bad level one. Okay, so over here, what I do is I do my red buff with the help of the leash. I, I tell them to walk this way instead of this way because they might be cheesing because Graves sometimes doesn't need a leash for his buffs. And I'm just heading towards the blue buff here. I'm doing my typical red buff, blue buff, gromp, path. So, um, while I do my blue buff, what happens here is that Graves knows that the vein doesn't have flash, right? Um, so that he's looking for a level 2 gank here. But unfortunately for the Graves, uh, the bot lane does misplay in the enemy side. And what they do is that they, they push too early. They could have chilled way back here, but instead they push too early. And that's a very common mistake even at D2 elo, right? If you want to let the jungler gank, and he they knew that he was coming for a while, you have to play very very back and like you, you have to... Not super back, because then that would be weird too. But you have to not be a, so aggressive, right? Like, look at them being so aggressive here, which allows for this Graves here to not be able to gank. Which is great for us. I'm not complaining, I guess. But they obviously misplayed uh, this level 1 uh, skirmish, which could have actually netted them to an early snowball. So it was well played by our bot lane too, for them to be able to establish that Oh, it's possible that someone's coming, or we should we should back off here. Very good job by them. So now that I see that the Graves is bot, what I do is I'm going to do my blue buff, but instead of doing my Gromp, I'm going to go straight for his red buff. Okay. So let's fast forward here a little bit. We see here that the Graves actually angles to go for another gank, this time mid. And now at this point, this is a little stretch by the Graves, right? Um, it's very risky. Um, not only is he going Dark Harvest, right? In Dark Harvest, you kind of want to, um, you know, like, I guess you can play aggressive with Dark Harvest, but you also want to kind of scale up and farm. But instead, he chooses to go for another gank instead, instead of doing a camp in the mid lane. Um, he actually does burn uh, our Swain Flash, so that is kind of worth it as well. But soon enough, um, so since I know that he ganked mid and he's possibly to come walk this way instead of going a safer route around here, I'm going to wait right here. And fortunately for me, this Graves walks right into my trap. So as I anal analyze this, um, I just want to show you guys a quick combo. So I do an auto, I W first and then do an auto Q auto, right? Uh, I think one thing I could have done better here is not W so early. By W early, I am not able to, I'm not going to be able to chase him once he gets out of this range. And um, there was actually no, not much of a need to W so early because I was going to land my auto Q auto no matter what. So I'm able to proc my PTA. Um, I have my W to be able to chase him. He ease, I'm going to flash after him. He flashes as well. So we burn the Graves flash. Graves is extremely low. We only we know that he only did one buff. So now I'm going to look to kind of pressure him. Now I do a nice scanner ward here. I'm able to take the scanner, uh, this ward over here. This Graves is unable to get to his red buff. But now, importantly, we have to analyze two things while I do this, right? One is that this Garen is starting to hover and trying to see, do I need to come the mid lane to try to help out my jungler and my mid laner. Another thing here is that we see that the Vagar is farming while the Swain is coming up and trying to force something. I elect to back off because this Garen continues to walk over to the mid side. So we do not have Pryo here. This Aatrox is playing a reactionary where if the Garen does walk, he will follow, which is good on the Aatrox. But I wanted to call it off because the Garen can get a flank and even if somehow we are able to do this guys, um, the risk doesn't outweigh the reward. And here's here's what I mean. Even though the reward is big here, uh, what's our win condition? Our win condition is going to late game with our stronger late game composition, right? We don't want to make any risks where somehow they can win the skirmish, right? And we can fall extremely behind and give this Graves who 
was who took some ridiculous risks by going bot mid gank without farming at all, except for his first buff. We're going to give him possibly two stacks of Dark Harvest and also like some kills. No, I, I didn't want to do that. So, um, Graves ease out, but the stun is incredible. This is a, this is a broken ability where we, I can't even go to the Graves. I don't have flash. So like, I, I'm just like a sitting duck here, right? This Swain is coming. I, I can't. So the thing is, like, I'm also a level two trundle. I can't really chase anyone. That's the problem, right? Maybe I could have chased that Graves here, right? Maybe if I W'd. Did I have W? Yeah. Maybe I was able to chase the Graves in this scenario, right? But I just, I, I was just uncertain. Maybe that was my misplay, but I was uncertain. Because at the time, I wasn't. Guys, I'm not like a challenger level. I'm not like going like this while playing the game. I'm not like, oh, oh, let's see where the Garen is, right? So I thought there was also a possibility that the Garen was coming down, right? And I just didn't want to deal with it because I would be overextended. The Garen would come through. The Vagar would come. And even though I killed the Graves, I would probably die for the kill on Graves. Because my only backup was the Swain, who's a level 2 Swain. So I'm going to retreat. And um, I'm going to go for my Gromp. Um, to get level 3, and the way I decided that I'm going to punish the Graves for doing those two ganks is I decided that I'm going to commit to try to get double Scuttle. Now the reason I um, I know that I have a good chance of getting both Scuttles is because I know that the the Graves only did one camp, which means that he needs to do two camps to get to level 3, two more camps to, do level, to get to level 3, so while he's getting level 3, I'm definitely going to be able to get the Scuttle in time, and um, he's gonna have to walk all the way this way to get the scuttle while I'm just I'm planning to just go straight through mid and get that scuttle right there, there's got to be a way for me to uh, secure that scuttle so let's just yeah I'm just going to quickly see I'm not gonna use pillar on scuttle guys by the way because um, even though it's gonna be a faster way for me to get scuttle if I pillar because it can stop scuttle from moving um, there's an opportunity that I, I might have to use uh, the pillar in a fight. Maybe something breaks out, so I want to always leave that option open. Now I'm going straight to the other scuttle. I don't even care if they have vision of me doing it because I'm committing to that as a punish. Graves has elected to full clear his top side, which is good for me because I'm able to get double scuttle here. Nice. Okay, so let's let's look over here. Real quick, give me one second, guys. So I'm looking for a mid gank here because, um, what you call it? I see that there's an opportunity after getting my scuttle and. Guys, I'm Trundle. I'm not looking to necessarily farm up a lot, right? I'm looking to try to be proactive. So I see that the Vagar is a little overextended. So I'm going to go for a nice pillar here where I pillar his escape route where he would try to go this way towards where Graves might be. So I'm going to get him away from that. Unfortunately for us, he pillars both of us and pillar kind of counters us, right? There's not, I don't, Swain doesn't have some type of ability to go over the pillar because he didn't, doesn't have flash. I don't even have flash too. So unfortunately for us, this is an unsuccessful gank, but we do establish mid priority, right? This Vagar was being a little greedy, could have reset before, but instead, and he also has TP, but elects not to and stays. So right here, I'm doing my, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to do my Raptors, right? I was going to start to do my Raptors until I saw what's happening in the bot lane, right? Crucially for me, I decided that Raptors, even though I was about to start it, I see an opportunity in the bot lane, and I'm going to take it, right? So instead of doing the Raptors, right, I'm going to follow into a fight where I know that bot lane's pushed up and I have an opportunity to gank here. So what I do here is I'm going to scanner, right? Come up to them. They don't react fast enough. And now I can get an easy pillar off of these two who are just bundled up together. I land a nice pillar over here to uh, knock up the Nami. I know that while the MF is going to be able to kind of escape, uh, we're able to secure at least summoners on Nami. He flashes and I want to commit out the Nami, try to kill her. So we also burn heal and we burn um, Nami's flash. 
So that's gonna that's gonna be a definite win for us. What I want to do now is I'm going to clear the Krugs, and I'm gonna call it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna recall and reset. So we're gonna see here that the Graves actually does respond correctly after he finishes his Gromp. He's going to elect to do the dragon because he knew that uh, I'm going to reset very soon because I already ganked bot, I ganked mid, I did a whole skirmish here. Um, I'm definitely going to reset because I didn't buy and he already bought his Docker's Blade right here, right? Nice first blood by the Aatrox, guys. One thing I want to say about that Aatrox is if you guys noticed um, in that whole top lane skirmish, right? That whole top lane like tippy toe that they were doing because of our skirmish here Aatrox was the one near the lane which means that he was going to get an exp advantage because his garen was kind of like over here seeing if he wanted to commit the help out and the Aatrox was able to garner a small advantage due to the garen uh being drawn towards my pressure so even though i don't want to say anything about like i won top lane jungle diff right that's that's just completely not true but i do want to credit and and possibly and say that it's possible that my pressure over here allowed this Aatrox to, to garner a small lead and take advantage and kill the Garen, right? Um sometimes people are like, oh coin flip top, right? Looks like we got the we won the coin flip with getting Aatrox instead of Garen. What if I had the Garen on my team? Well, what I want to say to that is that if we had the Garen, we would have had top top priority, right? If the Garen was in blue team and the Aatrox was in red team, we would have had top priority. So I would have probably pushed for this red buff. We could have possibly got kills on Graves and Vagar, and it would have been a totally different game because Graves, Garen was the one that was ready to roam. So guys, hindsight's 2020. It's insane. Like you never really know what's gonna happen. So it's not it's not just like always a coin flip. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. Okay, I'm just gonna continue here then. So we see that the Graves is just doing his dra the dragon. I've reset. I'm gonna elect to get a Sunfire Cape here. Not a, a bomby cinder here. Um, the Cinder Hulk is one of my favorite items here, and the reason why I don't get like a Stalker's Blade, I get bomby cinders instead. Is bomby cinders helps out with my clear much more. It'll help me with my tankiness. It's going to also give me damage to my E, which I always love. I always love that little small damage it, it gives my E. So right here, I was thinking about doing my Raptors. I was going to do my Raptors again. But guess what, guys? Instead of doing my Raptors, I again see another opportunity over towards bot, where our bot lane is extremely pushed up, and this Graves is looking to come down. I believe I did have vision of the the the, uh, the Graves coming through to our bot lane. Let me just confirm that I did. Yeah. So here's the thing. I knew that the Graves did the dragon, right? And I knew that our bot lane was completely pushed up. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that the Graves is going to go bot and try to get a kill because the, our bot lane is so pushed up and they just did dragon. Because the, the proximity wise, it just, it just makes a lot of sense, right? So I'm not going to elect to go for camps. Instead, I'm going to go towards bot lane. This is a little embarrassing, guys. So look at me, right? Look at me. I don't even go towards bot lane. I first clear vision, right? I, I opt to clear vision, then go back to my raptors, and I'm like about to start it, right? When I, the moment I see graves here, and I see my bot lane in trouble, then I ditch my raptors for good. And I'm going around. I'm going around instead of going this way because if I went this way, I possibly wouldn't be able to even have a flank opportunity. Um, that's something I need to learn from, right, guys? I need to use my brain, and I need to realize that Graves will most likely already be here, so I need to just start walking immediately. The saving grace for us is this Aatrox. This crazy Aatrox actually channels TP over here. He's looking at what's happening in bot lane, and this TP, even though it's easily going to get canceled by Garen's Q, scares them from committing to this dive or committing to the kill on Lulu, right? He ease away instead of finishing off this Lulu, okay? And now instead, this Vayne is able to get a kill on Graves, even though the TB got canceled, 
They wouldn't know that because they're not in comms with Garen. That's the importance of comms, guys. That's why solo queue is a totally different beast than comms. I'm running my butt over to the bot lane, right? I'm running my butt. I pass over a pink ward that I already knew about because I scanned it before. But at this point, um, there's two things about this pink board. One, this pink board actually um, doesn't have much vision. If we want to quickly go to the red's point of view, it doesn't have any vision of over here. It only has vision over here. So they actually spot me for like a second, like a millisecond. So they're not going to be able to react to that unless they're like Chris Paul of League of Legends and they have ultimate court vision, right? That's not going to happen. So I'm able to go here, get a nice juicy um, pillar onto the team. Not pillar, sorry, a double kill onto the team. Um, this MF, after seeing me, instead of trying to flash away and trying to disengage, um, she tries to go to kill the vein. And uh, I don't really blame her for this decision. I think the bot lane, enemy bot lane, made um, some crucial mistakes that did cause them to lose this early game. One, the, the biggest one being that they were playing two up in that level one, but they, they continue to try to pressure and take advantage of the early game and force things when they didn't need to. Um, and that's something that we see a lot with early game compositions. And that's why generally in, in like Diamond 2 ELO and many ELOs, like early game comps, sometimes when they should have the advantage and clear like, like upon looking at just team compositions, I would give... Um, the Graves team, a 60% chance of winning the game if everyone just played equally because uh, their team comp, just their early game out pressure should have been more than enough, right? But they tried forcing things too hard. And what happens when you force things too hard? You make mistakes. And that's where late game team compositions just thrive against and just like will eat up those mistakes because it's so much easier to just catch mistakes than it is to like to, to commit to things and, and have them being accurate all the times. So over here, I'm going to be able to kill the MF because this MF ops to try to get the kill. And I don't, like I said, I don't blame them because they're trying to uh, force an early game lead, right? They're already down 2 0 in kills. This early game was a disaster for them, even though they got the dragon. Um, so I killed the MF, right? She doesn't even burn flash there. And now I'm just going to easily kill the Nami because I already know that she burned flash on that exchange before. I already know that she doesn't have any ignite. So this is a free kill for me. So now things are looking really good for our team. Things are looking great. Even though we don't have the first dragon, we are a late game team composition that is up 4-0, up 2k gold. Things are looking really good. One thing that's really greedy that I do here is I, there's a couple of things that I do that's greedy here. And this is something I need to work on, greed. I get the scuttle over here. When the Graves could easily have punished me for it if he went straight to the Scuttle. Instead, this Graves doesn't know the value of Scuttle and, and opts to elect to go for his blue buff first. So I get away with it. Now I'm going for my red buff here. Um, just going to fast forward a little bit. This Graves, um, so this bot overextends because of the wave. They're trying to just shove the wave um, so that they can have a reset. Um, they wouldn't get froze on, and life could go on. Graves does a good job of just kind of coming right here immediately, and and trying to you know get some pretty free kills on their team. Burns Flash gets the kill on to Lulu, and then he will get the kill. They will get the kill on Vayne as well. So that's like a saving grace for their team. Something we didn't have to do, but. Um, mistakes are made, guys. Mistakes are made. There's nothing you can do about mistakes from your teammates. Um, you just have to like move on and not tilt from it, right? I'm not gonna even type them in chat, being like, "Yo, guys, come on! Like, why are you guys playing so up? Like, just back and reset," because the lane was in a really crappy position before. So now that I know that this Graves was bought, what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna look to go to his either his red buff or look for a top gank. Okay, so I'm just gonna clear my wolves. The reason why I don't even touch um, Raptors, by the way, guys, and and a lot of times in games as Trundle Jungle, I like to avoid Raptors because it's 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 the worst camp to take as Trundle. It takes such a long time to clear, and people who play Trundle know this. But even if I have Cinder Hulk, like uh, Bomby Cinder, like Raptors is just one of those annoying camps that for Trundle that you don't have any AOE. It's just annoying to take. So I'm looking here. 
right? I'm going towards top instead of doing my blue buff because I see a skirmish happening. This Garen has vision of me, right? Because I'm, I'm going right through a pink ward. And there's two things Garen could have done. One, try to run away. Two, commit. He thinks that he's just dead um, over here. So that he's, he's just going to try to commit and try to kill the Aatrox. Okay? Because he sees me here, he knows that um, I have to try to kill Aatrox before I die. He doesn't even have flash, so he knows he's dead either way. Fortunately for us, this Aatrox is just able to wipe him out. So, we get that Garen kill, which is really good. Our Aatrox is now 2-0. and I'm going to just quickly secure the blue buff here. I would like blue buff because there are a couple things that I want to do before I back. I don't want to just reset after this blue buff. I want to get this... Um, hold up. We see that the Graves was here, right? So... The reason why I want to get this blue buff and not give it to the Swain, usually I would give it to the mid laner, right? I am Tron Jungle, I don't really need blue buffs. But the reason why I wanted this one was because I was really low on mana and there were more things to do here. Because I knew Graves was bot, I knew I had to go into their enemy jungle and take their red buff and I would need mana to do that quickly. I was running very low on mana. When you go um, uh, Bombie Cinder, instead of like getting your uh, stock Soccer's Blade or... Stalker's Blade or uh, your jungle item, it causes you to go oom very quickly because you don't have those bonus manas you get from clearing camps. Therefore, I get the blue buff and I'm just able to quickly get that the red buff. And now I'm really fat. So I get the red buff. And now what do I see? I see a Garen that's overextended. This Garen is trying to get plates, trying to consolidate, trying to um, mitigate the Aatrox early game lead by getting some plates. But forcing and trying to... Uh, push when when you're behind and you're in early game comp often leads to even more disaster as we will see here this is just a free kill on the garen so this is the way i execute this one i'm going to pillar so that he has no opportunity of escaping aatrox and staying in turret range right so i'm going to ult him next because garen's a tanky boy but if i ult him i will one siphon damage from him two steal away his tank stats and making him very you know a lot squishier now I'm going to keep walking up while autoing him. I'm not going to just auto him, auto him. I'm going to keep walking up because I know this Garen is walking up. By the way, guys, sorry for my tone if I'm sounding like a little like upset. I'm not upset at all. It's just that I recorded this um, exact VOD before. But due to my mic, some, some mishaps occurred and like it sounded really terrible. So I'm just going through it again. Uh, so apologies if you guys are... A little annoyed with my tone. I'm not usually like this. Sorry, guys. So, we're just going to get the kill onto Garen. I'm going to give it to Aatrox because I am Trundle Jungle, right? I want my laners to get kills as much as possible. One quick thing I want to say about that is um, at lower elos, you just want to take the kill because there's like so many, so many times in lower elo, like you try to give a kill and they just completely mess up. And in higher elo, right, like D2 is not super high elo, but like usually they will not mess up too much. So um, I'm able to give kills in this elo, but if I were in a lower elo, I would just secure the kill, okay? And another thing, like I mentioned, if I'm like super fed as Trundle, I'm going to go more damage because I have the gold of rent from my team. So right here, I actually make a mistake. Um, this Swain is, doesn't really have too much gank pressure. This Vagar is a really hard lane to gank for Trundle Swain because of our lack of mobility. So I try to get a gank off over here, but this pillar, this stun was a really nice place. Stun where I, if I, the only way for me to go up to Vagar is for me to tank a bunch of turret shots. So I'm trying to wait out the stun and we get an unsuccessful gank towards mid. What I could have done instead was get the Rift Herald, reset. And then get ready for dragon because dragon was spawning very soon it's spawning in a minute right so i made a I made a mistake that was my fault my fault a better player than me would have just secured the rift, rift herald here but i learned from my mistakes and life goes on okay so i'm going to reset here for this uh dragon because i have a huge buy what i'm going to get here is i'm going to get my uh cinder hulk and i am going to get skirmisher saber i usually build stalker saber um, but I've learned from just a bunch of people that I don't really need Stalker Saber. Stalker, I already have a uh, pillar as my slow. I Q people for my slow. I use W to just run into people so that I could slow them. 
Popular Blade is very repetitive, so nowadays I'm running Challenging Challenger Smite. And this will give Tank Trundle a lot more damage. Um, this Challenging Smite, because it will give me a lot of true damage. So guys, don't go um, the Frozen Smite anymore, unless you're just you had a bad early game and you're planning to just be a full utility guy, right? If you had a bad early game and you're just trying to be a ward with a lot of CC, then you go um, Stalker's Blade for ultimate CC. But if you had a, a a game like me where I went like 2-0-1 or like not even 2-0-1, I went even, game's looking fine, I would go uh, Challenging Spite. So let's continue here. Okay, so... I'm going to look to secure this dragon for our team because I don't want them to have a two dragon lead. Their win condition is is to get dragons um, early and try to um, play for soul. So I just want to put a, a foot uh, on the door for that win condition opportunity. So over here, I'm going to hop over and this Graves, I don't know what he's trying to do. I, I, I guess he's trying to ward over here, possibly. But even then, he doesn't have, he only has a pink ward. So what is he going to just pink ward over here? Maybe he tried to, E in so that he can use the blast cone, but I, I find a, a wild craves here. And he already uses smite for me. And what I'm going to do, because I know that we did not have bot prio, my team's pinging me away. I'm just going to simply just run away. I'm just going to run away. I'm fast as trundle. I have pillar. I'm tanky. You're not going to be able to catch me. So we are able to burn the Nami ult, which is great for us, right? That's awesome for us. Now, no Nami ult. And in this little segment, I'm going to emphasize the importance of understanding spells, cooldowns, and cooldowns, right? So what happens here is that I am going to scan because I know there's probably like a ward or a champion here, right? What this Vagar does is Vagar is here, and in response, she burns her stun. She burns her stun when she doesn't need to. She already had backup for Graves. She already had bot priority, but instead she chooses to and elects to burn her stun. And I know what this means, right? I'm going to back off a decent amount as a bait. I'm going to back off as a bait. And then the moment the stun is about to come out, right? And I know it is. I know Swain's coming here. I know Vagar does not have any stun. So that means they have no peeling. They have no ability to try to get away from us. Now I'm going to commit. Right? So I ult the Graves to make him squishy, take damage away from him, secure the kill on Graves. Because there's no way that he can escape, right? No flash, burns, uh, burns smite before some for some weird reason on me, and then this Vagar, still no E for at least for a while, right? So I know we can at least burn the flash, the flash if I flash onto him. So that's exactly what happens. This Nami is now completely out of place because we, you know, she was trying to help her team. So now I'm looking for the Nami. I get a nice pillar onto the Nami. This MF tries to uh, scare them away by ulting, but this Vayne knows better. This Vayne knows that I can just quickly evade that MF ult, and life goes on. So now we get a free dragon. One thing that does happen here is our team does greed, right? I try to ping them away from doing this. Like, guys, why are you trying to kill the Vagar? Just let, leave them alone. Like, the MF is there. We don't know anything. Like, what if they come back in time? Unfortunately for us, this Vagar is able to pop the Lulu, and... Um, Vagar gets a kill, and Vagar is literally their only win condition at this point. And it's not a strong win condition, but it's their only win condition at this point. I'm just gonna secure the dragon. Unfortunately for us, this this Graves, uh, this Garen also gets the shutdown onto Aatrox. But guys, you can't always expect your teammates to play perfectly. That's just how League of Legends is, right? Okay, so we secure the dragon. Now I'm going to go ahead and. Get my Raptors with Cinder Hulk. It's a lot easier to get Raptors once you get Cinder Hulk here. And unfortunately for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to greed for Scuttle. And I'm going to greed for Scuttle, even though Lulu is not with us yet. Even though Vayne hasn't reset and she already burned alt before, I'm going to elect to be dumb and go for the Scuttle. So, because. Yeah, so I'm going for the Scuttle. This Graves is trying to go for the Scuttle. I'm going to try to look to kill him. I, we have mid-priority, but we do not have bot priority here. I mean, we have like a Vayne who's here, but she's very weak. So I'm scaring away this uh, Graves, trying to hit him. But we just can't. We just can't kill him. 
we don't have enough damage. This vein needs to reset. So what I'm trying to do here is just trying to dip. At this point, I'm just trying to dip. I, I understand I made a mistake. So I'm trying to dip. But as we can see here, they do a little misplay where they don't respect the Lulu coming in. And at this point, we can't go this way, right? We can't go this way. So the only hope that we have at this point is to outplay them and run hordes down and try to outplay them, right? So this Lulu, okay, I'm just going to analyze this. And this is probably going to be the last thing of this video because you, you guys will see. So I also use my challenging smite pretty late here. And that's because I'm not used to using challenging smite with Trundle because I always had like Stalker's Blade. Um, <clears throat> over here, um, this, yeah, we have to swing back up. We're looking like we're about to get sandwiched. Things don't look good, too good for us. But what this Lulu does is she makes a nice play here. She makes a nice play. She goes up and then she ults herself, right? She attracts the tension. She attracts the damage. And what that does is it gives us enough of an outlet to get to secure the kills, keep running them down. MF had to burn flash over here. I, I do a, a pillar here to try to um, get the MF, but honestly, I probably baited the Lulu into dying, which is pretty funny. Good thing for me too, my ult just comes up just in time so that I could use it and not die to the Vagar by siphoning HP and taking damage. We're able to get the kill on Graves, and at this point, guys, Aatrox does a nice TP over here to come through and get another kill. Doesn't die to the Vagar. At this point, guys, life is good. I guess I'll just go to the last team fight that we had that really cemented the game and I'll stop over there. So let's just fast forward here. <clears throat> I get a reset and I'm going to get Kindle Gem over here. What I should have done actually, so the, let me explain my build real quick. I get Merc Treads. I, uh, I finished Merc Treads for this Vagar stun, but I should have gotten um, a Glacial Shroud for the armor because they have Graves, because they have MF, because they have Garen. Glacial Shroud into something like Frozen Heart would have been a lot better, but I get Kindle Gem first. I'm still b planning to build Glacial Shroud second because I love building a Kindle Gem Glacial Shroud core. But unfortunately for me, I make the decision of getting Kindle Gem. And that's something I will try to be more accurate on and improve on later. At this point in the game, I was a little lackadaisical too because I knew that we had a huge advantage. Our late game was so much superior than theirs and we're already up in this game. Like Life was feeling pretty good in this game. So I'm going to get quickly speed this things up. I'm going to get the red buff here. I'm pretty fed, so I don't want to give my red, the red buff to, uh, to Vayne just yet. Then I, I'm looking now, I'm looking for a, a gank in the mid lane. Because this Vagar is playing two up, the Swain is pinging to TP. So it's an easy gank for us. Because as you guys may know, TP has changed. And now when you use TP upon arrival, you get a bonus movement speed. So I'm just going to wait out the stun here. I already set a pillar for her, um, and the, the placement of the pillar is pretty crucial here, so that I'm blocking out the her... I'm just going to wait for the pillar right here, yeah. So I'm going to block out, um, maybe the a better pillar placement would have been right here, but I wanted to block out her ability to just walk away this way, So um, and she would have to go through like immense flow anyways, so... I'm able to just pull her over there, give Swain an easy route, because the only way that she could walk is that way, and we get a nice kill onto the Vagar. Now, this is what they do in response, right? Because the Vagar is already dead. They know that the late game is worse. They're going to try to do some crazy forcing stuff now. So the whole squad comes over to try to make plays happen. This MF burns ult, doesn't kill the Swain. This Garen comes in, tank and turret, tries to ult Swain. Swain lives with like 40 HP, right? Now this Garen dies. At this point, life is bad for the for the enemy team, guys. Uh, this Vein is coming in. Vein has free reign. They already burned all their ultis. This Nami tries one more ulti to try to kill the Swain, but the Swain lives again. Um, so this is kind of all she wrote. We're up 15 to 5 in kills. Uh, we're gonna get Rift Herald here. We're gonna get advantage of the whole game. And yeah. So I'm going to end this video over here, this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, sorry again for the tone of voice because it was a little annoying for me to just do the entire VOD again. But uh, you live and you learn. So uh, I hope you guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, um, please consider to like and subscribe. And 
I will be back for episode three uh, when I can. There have been some issues with the replay. Um, so I've been trying to figure out uh, what I can use for content. Thanks, guys.